YouTube as it going, the Godows is back with the Pittsburgh Steelers preview and what we can expect for not only this season, but maybe moving forward when it comes to them, because I think Pittsburgh has some big plans, at least I think so, and we'll talk about all that and what to expect this year. Uh, we are doing this video for every NFL team. We did like 20 plus as a playlist on the channel. You will find with the other teams that we have done. Uh, the first team to get two comments, two comments in this video will be next, so a little bit different uh, on how we decide uh, the next team for this one, but Pittsburgh Steelers top three things, what to watch, what we could expect. Uh, offensive lines that finally complete. They've been trying to build it for some time. I, I've, it's been a slow process. It feels like because it's been they 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 had one of the better offense lines in football for some time, but it, it's been like it's been a bit. It feels like it's been a bit since then, but and it's been a slow process and they've had some bad years, but I, overall I think they're starting to put it together and they're doing a good job. I think there's a chance that maybe not the week one starters, but their current room features the starters of the future for this Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line. I've loved what they've done with the tackles. I was a big fought new guy, so love bringing him in. Uh, you know, And then Broderick Jones is a raw prospect out of Georgia. I feel like he was not in the right blocking scheme when he was in Georgia. And he actually fits more of this scheme. So that's fantastic. And he was starting to kind of grow a little bit uh, towards the end of last year. So I think he can continue to get better. And they have good offense linemen. You know, they draft Frazier. So they added two pieces, uh, you know, in terms of the draft. Uh, that are going to start right away, but they add McCormick as well, who could be a future starter, maybe not right away. Uh, but Daniels and Sumalo finish off that offense line with that guard spot. So it feels like more of a complete offense line. Of course, there's going to be hiccups still because it's very young. It's very new. Um, they're learning a new system, new scheme. Well, some of these guys are just coming in there for the first time, but under Arthur Smith. But Arthur Smith plays a part as well. And that's kind of another take that's kind of mixed in here with number number two and number three is that I, I think Arthur Smith is a way better hire than what people talk about. People just want to talk about where well, the Falcons were disappointing. Passing game was awful. He didn't give the ball to Bijan enough because he was on my fantasy roster. I hear too much of that nonsense. Uh, and then he got fired because he failed in Atlanta. Some of those things are true. Like he failed in Atlanta. He insisted on the wrong quarterback. Um, he insisted on, he's a little stubborn, like he felt like he didn't need a great quarterback to, to win big games because he thinks his system is more important. So there are some flaws there, but at the end of the day, he's a pretty good offensive coach, seeing what he did in Tennessee, and I thought even being in games with a very bad quarterback and Desmond Ritter said something, like they, they would be able to move the ball down the field, the game plan was pretty solid, That they were always physical, he always had the offensive line playing very well, and I think that goes... Uh, into a big part with this. You know, last time he was in Tennessee, the offense line was really good. They fell apart. Last time he was in Atlanta, uh, you know, because before he got to the Falcons, their offense line was starting to struggle. We're used to their offense line being good for so long. So I, I think he plays a part on the O line as well. So I think he could develop. I think he understands talent for the most part. I think he needs to, you know, find a better quarterback, obviously, not being a little stubborn there. But I think that'll be left up to the Steelers front office, and then even Mike Tomlin. So I think Arthur Smith being an offense coordinator is a great spot. So um, I think he can find ways to win football games. But I, I do think he plays a part on the offensive line getting better here. And number two kind of plays a part on that as well uh, with the run offense. But I think the run game on both sides of the ball I think will improve, which is huge. You know, but last year they got Jalen Warren going in the getting in the mix with Najee Harris. And the, offense, the, the run game, I should say, started to pick it up a little bit. You know, were they tw top 12 in rush offense, but sometimes they it kind of got a little dry or it wasn't, you were left wanting more. Like maybe more, Najee would go off one week and then it would be very disappointing. But I think it's going to be a lot more consistent. They are going to be physical under Arthur Smith. They've kind of completed this offense line, but like we talked about, they have a one-two punch at running back. Um, you know, so I think they're going to be in this, just the scheme. Arthur Smith's system, I think, is made for opening things up and being physical uh, underneath and on the ground specifically. So I think they'll be even better in that category. They're going to beat teams because how physical they are and how much they control the clock. But run defense, also, there is improvements, and that was a bigger thing. Like That needed to improve big time because over the last – few years they've been disappointing in terms of stopping a run you know who's been at more fault in some of these in some of these losses big big games probably the offense just not having enough 
mainly through the air, not being consistent. But when the when the defense was at fault, it was the run defense. You know, they they were they had big games where they surrendered a lot of yards on the ground. That wasn't just last year. It was honestly they were probably a little bit better last year than, than the couple years before that. Uh, but I, they made improvements. Uh, obviously, kind of by default with Cam Hayward coming back, but Keanu Benton, who we'll talk about in this video more uh, in his progression, and they added to the linebacker group with a big-time one in Patrick Queen. So I think this run defense improves. I guess the question is, how much will it improve? But yeah, they they were kind of out, Matt. There was some disappointing outings where it was just because of run defense. Like they gave up too many yards on the ground, and it was sometimes it was tough to get the offense and defense on the same page at the same time. So I look at the run game on both sides of the ball. I think will improve and must improve when it comes to defense, but it really should. We'll, we'll kind of talk about more of those players that play a major role in that under the, the section of players to watch. Uh, the number one kind of has to do with the future a little bit. It's a little different than some of the other videos, but I the, the Steelers front office, they know what they are doing right now. I, I think they're up to something. I, I don't think it's being talked about enough. They have positioned themselves for a big future. They are actually more focused on that. It doesn't mean they're not focused on this year. It doesn't mean they're like throwing in the towel, only focused on, on the future. They're going to compete. That's the Steelers' way. They're going to go out there and compete. They could possibly make the playoffs. They can win some football games. But they are absolutely sick of being a mediocre playoff team, like just barely making the playoffs and not being able to compete at all, and everybody knows it, in the playoffs. They're sick of that. But they also are not the Steelers absolutely Mike Tomlin and the Steelers do not want to start at scratch one square one rebuild they want to stay competing every single year and I think they positioned themselves in a great way for that like they're going to compete they're going to win some football games this year but they didn't go too crazy with the spending they moved on from Deontay Johnson they're like hey we can retool on receivers we don't want to dish out the big uh, the big contract right now. They are prepared for 2025 and beyond. You look at the cap situation for 2025 and beyond. They are in an A plus situation. If you look at the the years to come, and there's there's a lot of teams kind of in that category. Um, you know, a lot of teams like we're they have a ton of space in 2025, and everyone's getting excited about it. But do they have space in 2026 or 2027, 2028? Not there's not a lot of teams that have. All that are great financially for 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028. The Steelers are one of very, very few teams that are looking great, you know, positioned very, very well. And then look at other things they did. I talked about Deontay Johnson situation, but I talked about uh, what we didn't talk about is quarterback situation. They got they got a bridge type guy, Russell Wilson, one year deal. Hey, let's just let's get a veteran guy in here. Let's see what he's got. We we trade next to nothing for Justin Fields because hey, what if we got something special as a shot in the dark a little bit? Why not? Why not? And maybe he sticks around as a backup for for the long term future. Kind of just bridge guys, one year guys here. Um, you know, and that also you know points towards their future. And you look at the free agency coming up, the guys that could be available. I mean, they're already being link, linked to Brandon Ayuk, and they could trade for him. I think they're going to be cautious about their future, but if they trade for him, that'd be a future move. They didn't just trade for him for Russell Wilson or Justin Fields to be his quarterback, you know, if they were to do that, um, you know, for the long-term future. Uh, I, I really think they, they're going to take a look at Ayuk and, you know, you know, for now and for the future, if somehow a guy like CeeDee Lamb gets the free agency, there will be other receivers as well. I think they'll take a, a good long look, not being talked about right now, but I really think that's what their plan is, a good long look at Dak Prescott in free agency. Um, it seems like a pretty good fit to what they're trying to do and a step up of what Arthur Smith has had in his offense, but definitely could fit it. Uh, and then the, the other bigger names will come in. So I think that's where their mindset is. Their, their mindset is... One more year of being, yeah, we're physical, we, we, we'll be in games, we'll compete, but after that, no more of that. We're going to try to be those juggernaut, we're going to try to be that juggernaut team. I really think they're up to that. So it's really a team to watch, um, you know, over the next year, like what, how they look, what they do, the moves they make from now and a year from now and how they look. So it's a team I get excited about. For the future, but then again, there's teams like that you get excited for the future, and they have no chance of competing right now. The Steelers can compete, so that's the beauty of them. I think they've done it right, where they they didn't put themselves in a position to make terrible, well, not terrible, but 
They don't put them. They didn't put themselves in a position to make a decision that they don't want to have to make. Teams, the people within organizations don't want to have to go to step one in the rebuild process. Steelers don't have to do that. So uh, it's going to be a like a real quick retool and possibly can make. The, I think they're going to if they do it right, they can be very special in the future. Players to watch, a rookie, Roman Wilson. I was a huge fan of Roman Wilson out of Michigan. I thought he was underrated. It's a guy that isn't super flashy. It's probably why he wasn't underrated, but he plays in the slot. He gets open. He catches the ball very consistently, so he moves the sticks, you know, and that's exactly what the Steelers needed in there after trading Deontay Johnson. I think this is a guy that will really fit Arthur Smith's offense. He will play in a slot. He will get open. He will fit Russell Wilson. You know, if Russell Wilson will see this guy open in the middle of the field. Like, he will find him. It should be pretty simple for a quarterback that's declining. So it kind of simplifies things for him. So I think he could have a massive rookie season. I think he could be in that offensive rookie of the year conversation. If they trade for Ayuk, then maybe it takes some snaps away because they also have George Pickens as well. Uh, but I I, uh, I think Wilson's going to surprise some people. So really excited about him. Another guy I was super high on during the draft, but this was last draft, was Keanu Benton. I actually had a first-round grade on him, so I was extremely high. And he was sneaky good last year as a rookie. I mean, what I mean by that was you didn't hear his name a ton, but he was solid when he was on the field. I think he takes that next step up, that next big step up. I think he's going to be a special player in this league, a guy that can line up at nose, um, you know, or, or over the guard. So I think he's in learning from Cam Hayward and being around TJ Watt. Uh, I think it's, he's going to be a fantastic football player. So watch out for him for a massive breakout, a massive leap in year two. I really believe that. Uh, and a big part of that run defense, they need to step up in terms of run defense. It's been disappointing. I think he's a big part of that because he's a really solid run stopper uh, and he's only going to get better at it. And then number one has to do with that run stopping as well. Patrick Queen was their big free agency signing. A uh, lot of questions around him because he came in out of LSU. He was a, he was uh, re- he was really good that last year at LSU, so that helped him get drafted pretty high. But at the same time, it was kind of another raw prospect because he was a running back, actually turned linebacker throughout his you know heading into LSU, and he still you know relied on his athleticism. So and then maybe he was hot and cold early in in his career. He's still kind of early in his career, but early in his career in Baltimore, and it was like one second like okay. That's a guy. And it's like, next second, God, he's so disappointing. We wanted more. You know, it's kind of back and forth. Uh, and then this last year, he really took off, was a monster this year, really, really stepped up. And, yeah, he played next to Roquan Smith. He play, played under a great defensive coach for today's era and Mike McDonald. So, and just played on a great defense. So the questions are, the question is, will he be as good away from that coaching staff, away from Roquan Smith, away from that defense? Will he kind of go back to where he was? Um, and I guess you can kind of play both sides of this, but at the end of the day, he realistic, like he really stepped up. He got better last year, and this is the part of the, his career that was supposed to be him taking off because I actually did view him as kind of a raw prospect because he was kind of still just learning the position. So um, a guy to watch because, yeah, which, which guy are we going to get? Is he still progressing? Um, it, this team really needed help in the linebacker position. They've had struggles over the years, the linebacker position. I actually thought they stepped up last year. Because and it wasn't great, but they stepped up because they got more of fits. They were messing around with guys that just were not fits. Like I was confused about when they got Miles Jack, and I, I don't, I don't know. I just didn't really view like those types of guys they had around that time as a fit. Um, and then last year that they stepped up a little bit, but uh, now adding Patrick Queen is the is what they what they want, what they need, and they need him to play some good football. I think he does, but definitely a massive player to watch here for Pittsburgh and could decide a lot when it comes to this defense with this run defense you know, in the middle there. So we will see games to watch. I mean, I like week one, anything could happen in week one. You can't really have too many takeaways from it, but in Atlanta against the Falcons, Arthur Smith revenge game, but this is massive because the I think everyone believes the Falcons are going to be, are going to be a better team than the Steelers. I would agree on that, but in week one, Kirk Cousins learning this new, this, you know, a new, something he's not familiar with, I suppose, going away from Minnesota, a lot of new faces, is it going to click where you know the Pittsburgh Steelers will be ready to, to, to play and put pressure on Kirk Cousins coming off the injury? Um, so I think that's one the Steelers could steal in week one, and if they do, that's that's huge. Um, so I think it's a must-win game for both teams really in week one. Colts in week four, that's kind of – week four is right where the, the – league you know the season starts to kick into gear we start to really learn about teams you can't really have too many takeaways weeks one two three sometimes four even but and in indy 
who they really their defense really struggled with the Colts last year. Uh, really struggled to stop the run, and I think they made improvements in terms of stopping the run. We will learn here in week four if they can handle that team. I think a lot of physical, fast football in this game, so that should be a game that could go either way, but it, it was kind of, it kind of be a learning experience. Where are the Steelers at compared to last year? And the Giants may not seem like a big game, uh, but the Giants are, gonna, are a team that people don't have super high hopes for, but they're going to be in football games. They're going to play teams tough. Like They're not going to be a free win. Uh, unless they're completely beat up. And uh, Steelers are kind of a better version of that. Like, they're always, like, not the best team. But you got to worry about playing them. you got to worry about playing T.J. Watt. They're going to punch in them out. They're going to be physical. They can sneak – you know, they, they can be sneaky win football games. But a big reason it's on here is it's the game before the bye week for the Steelers. And the schedule difference from those first eight weeks in the last games after the bye week, massive difference. I, I think it's more favorable in the early part. So we're going to be looking at that Giants game. Week 8, before the bye week, before the tough, tough, tough schedule, They it's a must, absol, absolutely must win. Like, they have to win that game going into that bye week. So that's probably the biggest one on here, believe it or not, even though it's the Giants and people don't think of anybody's biggest game being the Giants. But technically their biggest games are going to be those divisional games. It's They're always a battle. It don't, don't, That division's so fun to watch. It's maybe the best division in football. Um kind of goes without saying so i don't really put the divisional games up there for that reason uh, some fans takes uh answer not can we play with arthur smith's offense russ is better yeah will russ be better than ritter will russ be better than the Russ that we saw last year i think both could be true i, I think both could end up being true or you know probably not a far far enough off though but yeah how would the passing game be for arthur smith i'm confident with the running game i'm confident with the underneath game confident with the offensive line progressing how will the passing game be Receiver three and tight, tight end utilization. More Washington. That's a good point. Washington was like a uh, really um, hyped up draft pick out of Georgia last year. Like he was supposed to go earlier. But then it was one of those ones like after he dropped, I, I myself and I think a lot of other people kind of went, yeah, I, I think I think that makes a lot of sense actually because you don't really know what you're going to get from this guy. Like he's big. I guess he's I guess he has some athleticism for his size, but when you watch him on the field, he's a little bit slower of a mover. He's like he's such a unique tight type tight end. How involved will he be? Will he fit everyone? So it kind of made sense that Darnell Washington kind of just lasted a little bit. But that's a really good point that I didn't think of. Like, will be, he be involved with Friar Muth? Because remember, Arthur Smith's Arthur Smith really likes those tight ends. He really likes those tight ends, and um, yeah, the res- a lot of two tight end sets, like not a not a ton of receivers out there. So, how important will it be? Um, you know, who's involved? The I mean, we know Pickens will be involved the most with the, with the receivers. He'll kind of try to be that Drake London of Arthur Smith's offense. But split va- backfield will Warren take over? I still think it's mainly Najee Harris, but w- at times Warren just looks straight up better. But um, I think Arthur Smith's going to like Arth- uh, Najee, Najee Harris a lot. Mixing up names here. Um, Keanu Benton breakout. We're on the same page. Queen providing stability in the middle of the defense. We are on the same page there. Could be interesting D-line and DB rotations. Good depth. Uh, pretty decent depth. I mean, I think they have their starters uh, set, though, ready to go. But they, they do have some depth in there. Cam Sullivan, Tomlin get, got extended. How would they handle making the playoffs with no success again? Um yeah, that was a big point of this video. I think they're they they are prepared for another Steeler like, not like the legendary Steeler season, but it's, that I guess you could say that Steeler like. But uh, the last quite you know few years, I think they're prepared and they're okay if if they have another one of those seasons. Believe it or not, they are ready. If twenty twenty five rolls around and they have a big off season like I think they they have and they do that same thing, then there's gonna be just a little bit a little bit of worry. You know, I I think they know they they're smart. They're not overly confident, which is, could be a bad thing. They know what they are, and they know what they can do in the future, and I think that could be big things. So that was a big point in my video. Uh, in what scenarios would we see fields? Um, Man, I think because of uh, the schedule, like they have to take care. You look at the schedule. Go take a look at the schedule. Those first eight games before the bye, that is the better part of that schedule. Like even though they'll play like the Falcons – in week one, like I said, it's a very winnable game for them. Even though, even if the I, I believe the Falcons would be better than the Sewers at the end of the day, I really think so. But um, in that game, the Sewers could be better. I really think so. But you look at that the beginning portion that's of the the schedule of this season, like they got to take care of business at least somewhat, 
or they're in trouble. Or, you know, so I, I think if Russell Wilson's really struggling and they're not taking care of business and they're running out of time to take care of their business in those first eight weeks, I think we could see Fields. So I don't think the leash is that long with Russell Wilson, even if they make it sound like it. So um, I think that Colts game in week four will decide a lot, kind of comparing where they were last year. And that's like week four when things are sp- start supposed to start, you know, kind of get going. I think that'll decide a lot there in week four. So that is a big game. Tough uh, tough a schedule in the NFL, all division games, KC, Philadelphia at the end. Yeah, that's what we were kind of just talking about. That's the end. We're so used to them taking care of business at the end there. Uh, it's going to be a little tougher. Rookie contribute. Uh, I feel like it's so tiny. I can't read it. Uh, oh, yeah, the kind of the, the rookies, Roman Wilson and multiple um, offensive linemen. Yeah, they're going to be a big, big part of that team. Uh, and then they'll play well, but they're asking a lot from these rookies. But again, I think in their the front office, the mindset. They're there. Yeah. They want to get those guys in the field developed. They want to compete this year, but they're ready for the long-term future, not just the long-term future, the near future from Adam. How will the running back rotation look like with Najee and Warren? I don't think it's similar in la- similar last year, maybe a little bit more of a split, but I think Najee's got to be the guy still. Can Roman Wilson be this year's draft steal? Absolutely, I think so. I think it was a big time pick. I think there's no reason why he shouldn't be productive in this style offense. I he'll, he'll be open. Um, yeah, he listed the offensive line rookies start by week one. I don't think McCormick starts unless somebody's injured between Daniels and Sumalo. Some people don't love Daniels. I think he can be decent. Uh, I, I want McCormick to be a backup right away. I don't think he's ready to start. I wasn't as thrilled with this tape as many others. He was more of like a highlight tape on the offensive line. Like the flashes were like, oh my God, like this guy's awesome. But if you watch every snap, there'll be times where he get, gets himself a little off balance. He puts his head down, um, kind of going for those power hits. Uh, power blocks. So uh, there's kind of a little bit of time to learn under Arthur Smith, these other offense linemen. I think in, you know next year he could be a starter. Um, take Steelers go ten and seven and get the six seed. Russ remains to start uh, all year. So yeah, there was two different takes. Kind of you had Adam with uh, some specific takes and uh, some things we talked. Some guys to watch that we talked about. But he had Russell Wilson and underneath them, um, uh, he had Justin Fields starts by week seven. Uh, and then Russell Wilson get, goes two and five, gets bench field, brings them to nine and eight records. So uh, I think that's a little bold given their 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 stretch, the schedule. But um, definitely the rest of that I could see. So some different takes there that we'd throw in there. Uh, Lewis, we know Queen will be a middle linebacker one. Good question with Holcomb, Roberts, and Peyton Wilson. Who do you see getting a bigger role at linebacker two? I don't think it'll be Wilson. They're going to be careful with him due to the durability concerns. Maybe you want to pack on a little more size to him, but he also could be a unique gadget type player because he's like a linebacker safety. I mean, he's a linebacker, but he almost has safety vibes. So you kind of can use him in unique situations, rush him, use him in coverage. Uh, I do not think he'll be linebacker too. I definitely think it's between Roberts and Holcomb. Holcomb is definitely flashier than Roberts, has more upside. Land and Roberts is kind of, he is what he is right now. That's like what you're going to get. But, I think that's an underrated linebacker. I've always thought that about Landon Roberts. I, I I think he is the safer bet to start next to Queen, but Holcomb has more upside, more flashiness to him. So do they do they think they get more more to gain with him in there? That's a really good question. Uh, I like Roberts a little bit better, a little bit safer, more consistent of a choice. But that is that is that's good. Warren will be uh, kind of a take here. Warren will be the week one. Is that what it says? Week one, RB1. I don't know. People, I think they'll really like Najee here. But again, they didn't They didn't give him that um, fifth-year option. So maybe they, maybe they have different plans. Maybe they just don't want to pay that running back. Maybe. I don't know. Um, maybe people are on to something. We'll see. Uh, Swimmer here, I thought he had a good take. Steelers gauntlet at the end of the season. Uh, or Steelers gauntlet end of season. Six divisional games. Chiefs and Eagles. Kind of what we talked about a little bit. Will they stay tough or collapse? It's an interesting point because we're so used to them just finding ways, just digging deep and getting those big time wins and making the playoffs. And it could be a little tougher this year because of the schedule. We talked about the difference between uh, first half of the season, second half of the season. Impact of run blocking or into the rookie. Yeah, we kind of talked about that. How much of an impact these rookies have? I think big impact from Fontenu, a huge impact from him. I think Frazier should start at center. Um, 
McCormick, I don't. I hope to not see a ton of him this year. I think something's going wrong if we see it. If or or see surprisingly very good right away. I think he has a future, high upside future. But uh, Luke had some predictions. I am predicting eleven and six finish with a top three run game. We did talk about the run game being really good and a disappointing passing game as they, uh, as I think Pickens. Uh, George Pickens takes a step back this season and Roman Wilson really outperforms. So we, I could see that with Roman Wilson. Um, he says Beanie Bishop undrafted corner is a guy to watch there um, in the slot. And then another one was to say, Jace, do you think there are still trying to add a big name receiver before the season starts? Or do you think they're just going to run with the ones they got? I think they're going to, I think they're okay with running what they have because uh, one, I'm not done with that though. We'll kind of circle back, but because Arthur Smith's offense doesn't really value having a long, long list of super good receivers, and they have some good ones there though, you know. So I don't know if they really need any more. They kind of have what will get the job done, and they are focused big time. Like I said, a lot of this video uh, on the future, uh, but they are probably already and will sniff around on Brandon Ayuk because if you can get a great, high upside, still improving receiver. That could be a part of your future that you can pay for the long term. If you can get him for a pretty good price, why wouldn't you? So they are gonna they are gonna continue to monitor that. In my opinion, um, I think I'm pretty confident about that. So um, they're not gonna force Ayuk. It doesn't mean they're gonna lowball the Niners and just not get them. Like they're. They, they can make a pretty good offer. They're going to monitor that situation. Uh, sounds like he wants to pay, play for the Commanders. Though. I think the Commanders have an equal or better shot than the Steelers, uh, or he could just be on the Niners still, and they can kind of just, hey, we're going. Niners can go like, hey, we need you here. We need you here. We're going for a Super Bowl right now. We're not focused on the future, and, you know, if you want to walk and take the take the bank, you know, after this year, that's fine because we want to go all out, all out for the Super Bowl this year. And if he says he's going to sit out, they may say, it, they might they they might call him on the bluff. They might he'll he'll come back at some point. Like he, how is he going to sit on the bench when we're playoff bound or we're in the playoffs? And they're, they'll take that risk maybe the Niners because um, they're just trying to win a Super Bowl because they're that close and they're built to win it. So I definitely think because of those reasons, it's realistic that they just refuse to trade him unless it's like a godly offer. So um, we will see. But that'll wrap it up for this one. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Again, the team that gets the gets two comments the fastest in the in the comment section. It was hard to say for some reason will decide the next one. So it's not just the very first comment. Some people don't love that. So we'll see how this works out. That video will be on Monday. So in a few days or at past after the weekend here, uh, check out our sponsor, liquid IV code goat for percentage off more sponsors and more important links pinned in the comments. Going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.